Everybody say it with me now. We will not overreact to the first week. 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 Right now, the Orioles are fighting to stay atop the AL East, and the Red Sox have by far the worst run differential in baseball. As a reminder, last season Boston finished a historic 61 games ahead of Baltimore in the AL East, and if anything, the Orioles roster has only gotten worse. So, as long as they sit in the wrong spots within their division, it's safe to assume it's early enough to not put too much stock in current stats across the league. Click here to see the updated 2019 MLB Power Rankings that said, the idea of signature significance can apply. If a team is so good, or so bad, this early, it can be a sign of things to come. Take the Red Sox, for example. It's too early to drop them very far, but with as bad as they've looked, it's at least reasonable to drop them when in the upper tier of teams. The same is true of most teams. It's too early to drastically adjust who we know the contenders to be, but within each tier of teams, it's fair to tweak things. And hey, how many weeks this season will we see an Orioles' four-game winning streak? It was enough to push them out of the dreaded 30th spot in the rankings, and that's cause for celebration in Charm City. Click here to see the updated 2019 MLB Power Rankings More Baseball News, the Nationals got their revenge on Bryce Harper and the Phillies with a wild 9-8 win on Wednesday, here's what you need to know as Washington heads to New York to take on the Mets Thursday, player notes, after sealing the Nationals victory Wednesday with a walk-off walk, Jake Knoll was optioned to triple a Fresno after the game to make room on the roster for Howie Kendrick. But with his ability to play both corner and field spots and all around the outfield, Noel could be back with the big league squad very soon. In other injury news, starting pitcher Anibal Sanchez was forced to depart after just four innings of work against the Phillies Wednesday after being struck by an Andrew McCutcheon comebacker in the third. Davey Martinez, Sanchez is dealing with a bruised hip. He gave up four runs on four hits before his departure, shortstop Trey Turner was placed on the 10-day injured list after breaking a finger in Tuesday's loss to Philadelphia, Adrian Sanchez was promoted from Fresno to take his place on the roster. Meanwhile, first baseman Matt Adams is still day-to-day -day due to a hip flexor but should be back in the next few days, and Michael A. Taylor is set to begin a rehab assignment at AA Harrisburg Thursday, Anthony Rendon and Juan Soto both enjoyed stellar days at the plate in Wednesday's win, each finishing just a triple short of the cycle. Injuries, SS Trey Turner, finger, 10-day LSP Anibal Sanchez, hip, status uncertain 1B Matt Adams, hip, day-to-day -day P, Coda Glover, elbow, 10-day ill of Michael Taylor, knee, 10-day ill 2B Howie Kendrick, hamstring, 10-day ill coming up Thursday, 4 quarters, Nationals at Mets, 1:10 p.m., City Field Saturday, 4 sixths, Nationals at Mets, 1:10 p.m., City Field Sunday, 4 sevenths, Nationals at Mets, 1:10 p.m., City Field Source, Roto World More, Nationals News, of all the takes on Nationals fans booing Bryce Harper in his return to DC with the Phillies. This one comes straight from the deep fryer. During Wednesday's episode of ESPN's High Noon, co-host Bamani Jones blasted the Nats Park crowd for booing Harper Tuesday night, calling them small. They booed him just because they are small people who wanted somebody to boo and that makes them feel better. At Bamani underscore Jones on Bryce Harper getting boos from Nats fans in return to DC. Twitter.com slash Acid Favav, High Noon, at High Noon Wenspin, April 3, 2019, they offered him a contract with deferred money out to 2072. Everybody with any observation here recognizes that he left because they didn't really want him to be there, said Jones. So what is it that people are booing? What has happened is people believe this is just what you're supposed to do. It is just supposed to be part of the fan experience, and as a result, they booed him just because they are small people who wanted somebody to boo and that makes them feel better. However, Jones' counterpart Pablo S. Touré defended the fans who booed Harper, I liked it because I like Bryce Harper as a wrestling heel. 
I want more Bryce Harper calling for the booze to his ear, said Torre. I want the bad blood. I want this, maybe they booed him because sports is sometimes a cathartic experience where you can boo people in substitution of people that you actually can't boo in your real life. You can say Nets fans are perhaps a little petty for booing Harper, but their hatred for him is very sincere. In fact, some of them now side with Jonathan Papelbon for trying to choke Harper in 2015, and no matter what Jones or anyone else says, Nats fans won't stop booing Harper until his final days in the majors. More Nationals news